Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 23 of my Android development tutorial. If you haven't watched any of the previous tutorials, you absolutely have to start at least at part 18, which is part of this app we're making right here. And I'll provide a link to that in the upper right-hand corner. And today we're going to talk about View Pager, Pager Adapter, Fragment State Pager Adapter, and a whole bunch of other things. Just to cut to the chase, I'm going to show you how to do some really cool things interface-wise, which it seems a lot of people are interested in. So let's jump over and take a look at what the final result will be. So here we are basically with our Census app, just like we had previously. And what I'm going to show you this time is previously, whenever we clicked on one of these people's names, that information popped up, and if we wanted to get to one of the other people on our list, we had to jump out of here and then hit back and then click on them. Well, from now on, what we're going to be able to do is just simply go and drag right through all of these different citizens all in one area. So I have a lot to do to implement this, so let's get into it. Okay, so to make what you just saw there, basically what we had previously, if you can't see this, view it full screen, it's an HD video. Basically, we had these list items right here, and these were all the different people we had to contact. And previously, if you clicked on one of these guys, what would happen is Census App would fire, and it would load the contact fragment, and that was it. Now, however, if we want to instead allow people to flip back and forth through all the different contacts, what we're going to need to do is when they click on the contact list activity like you saw previously. What we're going to do instead is send them to a new class called contact view pager and then load up all the pages that represent all the different contacts in our array list. So let's jump into our code and let's create this guy. All right, so the very first thing I want to do here though is a little bit of housekeeping. Previously, I made a bug, which I do on occasion. Basically what I want to do with this, I made this error right here in regards to the checkbox so that whenever they clicked on a checkbox, it's going to jump into contact and it is going to set contacted to the right version, whether the checkbox was either clicked on or not clicked on. So that was a little bit of an error. Basically what we need to do here is just take this Boolean value and let's throw that inside of there. So that's going to either contain true if it's clicked or false if it's not clicked. And that's all we need to do, and that's fixed. Now the checkbox will work properly if you didn't catch that error previously. So now let's jump in here and let's start paging this guy. Now this is going to require a brand new class and it's going to be called contact view pager .java. And of course it is going to be over in your source folder. So let's just start creating everything as we go here. Now basically what a view pager is, is it's a layout manager that allows you to flip left and right through pages in your app. So that's basically it, just like you saw in the example. And we're going to have it extend the fragment activity because we're working with fragments here again. And of course, that means I need to come in here and import that fragment activity library. So there we go. Then what I'm going to need to do is define our view pager inside of here. And like I said, just allows us to flip back and forth just like you saw. So there is the view pager. And of course, you got to get a library for it as well. Then since we're going to be working with our array list, I'm also going to define that inside of here and load it up. And just like before, I'm going to call this contact list. And of course, that requires a library. Now, of course, we're going to have to create this guy. So I'm just going to right click inside of here, go into source just like I did before, and then come down here to override implement methods. Whenever that opens up, we're going to have to click on on create and create that guy. And after contact list is perfectly fine, hit OK. And there that is. Basically, leave that alone. And we have to define our view pager. So just go the view pager is equal to new view pager and pass this inside of it. Now, just like we saw previously with the adapter of view and how it requires an adapter to make it work, this time we're going to use something called the view pager, which requires a pager adapter to allow it to work. And basically what the pager adapter is going to do is provide the adapter for populating the pages inside of our view pager. So you can just think of the view pager as just like a box and then it's going to contain all of our contacts, which we're going to refer to as pages. Now the specific name for the pager adapter that I mentioned previously is the fragment pager adapter. And to use the fragment pager adapter with our view pager, we're going to have to assign the view pager an ID. And that's simple enough. We're going to just go down into our values folder and we're going to create a file called ids.xml. So let's open that guy up and here it is. Now to define this resource ID, we're just going to say 
item type is equal to, and it's an ID, and then we have to give it a name. That's it. And the name is going to be view pager, just to be real simple, and then close off that tag. And that is all we're going to have to do for it. So now we can jump back over into contact view pager, and here we are. And then we're going to just set the ID for this. So the view pager set ID, and then it's just going to be r.id.viewpager, just like that. And there we go. Then we have to set the current view for our view pager. So we're going to say set content view, and then put the view pager inside of there. Then we're going to have to actually get our contact list. And to do that, we're going to call all contacts. And then we're specifically going to call git. And what git is going to do, if you can't remember from before, which is doubly understandable, it's going to check if an instance of all contacts exists. And if it does, the one instance is going to be returned. Otherwise, the instance is going to be created. Because remember, there is only one contact list. There's only one array list. And this guy, I'm just going to pass in this. And then I'm going to go git contact list to git our array list. And there we go. Now we have that. Scroll that up a bit. Of course, we're going to need a fragment manager. And I'm just going to call it frag manager, because I think that's what I called it before. And of course, the fragment manager is just going to add our fragments to our activity views. So I'm going to say git support fragment manager. And there we have it. Of course, we need our libraries. And I'm specifically, just so you don't get confused, I'm going to get the Android support version 4. And there it is. And like I said before, just like the adapter view that we used previously requires an adapter, like we used in fragment contact list, which I'm going to add, just pop open here real quick. See, here we go. And you can see here's contact adapter. And this is where we then went down through here and defined the contact adapter so that we were able to pull information from our array list. That's from the previous part of this tutorial, if you don't remember. Well, just like we set that up, the view pager is going to require a pager adapter. So pretty much the same sort of thing. So I need to set our adapter for it. Just go the view pager set adapter and then I'm going to call new and then I'm going to create a frag this is a long-winded one fragment state pager adapter and the fragment state page adapter is going to implement the page adapter that we've been talking so much about and basically just to cut to the chase what it does is it uses a fragment to manage each page and it also saves and restores each page's state while we are flipping through them. So, frag manager, of course, close that off with a semicolon. And this guy's going to say, hey, you need to import me. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to import it. And then it's going to say, hey, I have some unimplemented methods. Where are you? There you are. And it's going to generate them for me. And basically, what get item is going to do for us is get the specific contact from the right position in our array list. So all we need to do for this is to create our contact, the contact, and do that by calling contact list get, and the current position is going to be stored. The position meaning where in the array list are we? And I'm just going to change the name of this guy right here to position, just to make that a little bit more understandable. And then all we need to do is return a contact fragment by retrieving the ID number from the current contact. To do that, we're just going to go return contact fragment. It's going to grab me the right fragment for the very specific contact that I want. Fragment. And to get it, I just say the contact get ID number because it knows the position and I'm just saying hey I want the ID number for that contact in that array list and then I return it and that's what get item does for me it returns the proper contact fragment so I can display it and then down inside of get count all this guy's going to do for us is return the number of items in the array list so that we can keep track of them and just contact list dot size is what we need to return and now what we're going to need to do is set up fragment contact list, this guy right here, to call contact view pager, this guy right here, instead of calling census app, which is what it used to do. And that is way easier than you might think. We're just going to need to go into fragment contact list. That's the guy that generates the lists of contacts on the screen and defines what happens when one of those list items is clicked on. And basically, I have to figure out where exactly we're calling that intent on. Here it is. Right here, you see on list item click. And what we're going to do is just change census app to contact 
view pager which is the new class that we want to call whenever one of those items is clicked on. We still want to use put extra because we want to pass along the contact ID, but here we're just going to call regular old start activity, but we're still going to put our intent inside of it. So that's it. Previously we were calling census app, now we're calling contact view pager when one of our list items is clicked. And that is literally all we need to do to change fragment contact list so that it calls a different class when that's clicked on. But of course we are going to have to go into our manifest file and make a couple changes because this activity census app really isn't being used anymore. So what we're going to do is just highlight census app and instead replace it with contact view pager and save it. Now everything is set up to call the right activities. And actually, you could run this app and it would work. However, the only thing that's going to cause a problem here is if you would click on one of the list items, it's always going to bring up the first item in the list. No matter if you clicked on the second, third, tenth item in the list, it's always going to open up the first. So what we're going to need to do is go back into Contact View Pager and change that. And it's actually not that hard. Just come in here right where we left off and right after this guy. And here, remember, everything has a unique ID number, contact ID. And if before you enter this in, if you want to run the app to see how it works, go ahead and do it. It's always good. All right, so then we're going to say get intent, and then we're going to go get serializable. Because remember, we're passing the unique ID numbers for the contact that we're currently working with as we bounce back and forth between activities. And to get that specific, ID, we just call contact fragment dot contact ID, right like that. And of course you remember from contact fragment, that is where whoop, we scroll up here. This is the guy that we are referring to, which is going to store the contact IDs as they are being passed around. And if we scroll down inside of it, you can see here is another call for get serializable, which is going to get the right contact ID. So now let's bounce back over into contact view pager and let's get the library for the unique ID library that we're going to need. Now all we need to do is cycle through all the different contacts in our array list to find a match and then set the current position of the match so that the right contact pops up on the screen whenever it is clicked on. So of course we want to cycle through that normally means a for loop is equal to zero and we're going to cycle in here as long as there are items in our contact list and cycle away. Then as we are cycling we want to check for a match to the ID that we're looking for. So we're going to say get and this is going to be index or I in this situation. Then we're going to say get ID number for that current contact we're looking at and see if it is equal to the contact ID that we're looking for. And if it is we're going to say the view pager and we're going to in essence tell it what page it should be on whenever it is opened. To do that just say set current item to whatever it is and that's it. And then after we find a match we don't need to mess around in here anymore so let's just call break. And that is going to make sure the right contact pops up whenever you click on one of the contacts in the list. Then just to add something else onto this let's say that we wanted to change the title at the top of each of the different citizens that we are looking for as we click on a page. So let's say we want to put citizen number two or citizen number three, maybe to help us better categorize what citizens we've met with and which ones we haven't. I don't know, I'm just making this up just to be able to use this. What we're going to do is just call the view pager again, and then we're going to put in an event handler in here, set on page change listener. So whenever we switch to a different page, we want to do something new. And we're going to call view pager, and specifically we're going to call on page change listener. That's what we're going to create here. And it's going to automatically generate everything I need. Make sure I put a semicolon down there. I don't know why it doesn't automatically do that. And then let's say that on page selected, we want to come in here and set the title to something different. And like I said, let's say we want to say citizen number whatever is the current citizen that we're working with. And org in this situation is going to be the same as position for our array. So I'm just going to put position and that will categorize and every citizen that we meet with will have a custom number associated with them, at least for that day. And if we file save it and execute, and here you can see, here is our list, and of course click on Sally Smith. She opens up and we're going to be able to switch through all the different pages 
just like we did before. So there's some cool things you can do with interfaces. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.